Yo yo, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make this stitching animation in Blender. It's not super accurate up close, but it kind of gives you the idea that something's being stitched together. Pretty similar to the last tutorial I made, so if you guys want to check out that one, it explains it a bit more, but we'll be using a lot of the same techniques on this one as we did in that one. So to start off, we're going to need something to make these threads with, so I'm going to use a Bezier curve, and I'm going to subdivide it once, and we'll get this segment in the middle. I'm just going to bring that up and I'm gonna scale it out a bit so it becomes a bit wider. And I'll just bring these two bottom ones and bring them into the center a bit. So we have kind of like a loop forming. And I'm just gonna select all of them and subdivide them. Okay, so now we have these subdivisions in here. I'm going to open up a GeoNodes tab, pop in a set position here, noise texture, use a scene time to animate it. And we'll add a math in the middle of here and a vector math, pop in a vector math here, switch this one to subtract, and then just change all these to 0.5. And we'll change this math to a multiply, and seconds into value, change the noise texture to 4D, and then put the value into the W, press play, it'll be moving. I'm just gonna change this to 0.3 so it's a bit slower. The lower this goes, the slower it'll move, and the higher, the faster it'll move. Um, and I'm just going to switch the scale down to four, although we're going to be making a few of these so they can just have a randomized movement. So I'm going to duplicate it once, bring it back just a bit to separate it. And I'll just take both of those, duplicate them, duplicate them one more time. Okay, so now we have six of them. Before we do the movement, I forgot, we're just going to add a little bit of thickness. And normally you can, on a curve, add thickness right here with the depth, but for some reason with the noise texture, it messes it up. So we're just gonna go and then curve circle, something like that. So now all of them move the same, so we're gonna wanna randomize that a bit. So I'm going to make new geo nodes for each one, just go through and change the scale a bit and the roughness. So now that we have all those, I'm just going to take them all and put them into a new collection and we'll just name that threads for now. Okay, so now we're going to now we're going to put it on an object. So you can really do this on any object you want. I'm just going to use a Suzanne, for example. The best scale for all the numbers that I have is just default size and then just press S and then scale it by two. Now I'll open up a geometry nodes or distribute on faces and we'll add a instance on points. And in the last tutorial, I used a vector math with the, the distance. Here I'll be using the geo proximity. Uh, when you use distance, just whatever plane you're using as your proximity, if you scale it, it doesn't really register. Uh, it only registers if you're using the geometry proximity. So this one is good for the other tutorial, but I'll be using this one. I'll just use a plane, like I said, so I'll bring that into the geometry nodes too and add a position too. Geometry proximity is pretty similar to the distance, so plug geometry into target and I'll add a vector math and set it to scale and we'll add a random value underneath that just a normal math and we'll add a map range too to control it a bit take this vector math and just duplicate it and bring it over here plug the distance into the vector here and plug these two into this add Plug the value into value and results into vector. Change the scale also to subtract and then change all these to 0.5. And we'll plug the vector into the scale. Change this to relative two because we're gonna wanna take the position of this. Okay, so nothing's happening because we don't have anything as an instance yet. So I'm gonna drag in the thread collection and put it in there. Everything's there, but just like the last tutorial, we're gonna need to click pick instance, separate children, reset children, and click relative to. So they all move if you press play, and if you move around your plane, they should be affected just a little bit. First of all, the rotation isn't really right, so I'm gonna drag the rotation from the distribute points on faces and put it into the instance. Some quick numbers for this uh, are 0.7 here, and we'll go negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on the bottom, and we can change this and this around. Something like that. 
and I'll just put the density up to like 400. So now if you play it, there's quite a bit there. And if you move it, they should grow with the plane. Okay, so this one should be 0.2. How you can control this is the scale is going to be how wide that threading is going to be. I found around 0.7 for this scale works. I wouldn't change this bottom value. As you can see, it just grows from every point. So leaving it at 0.5 works. And this minimum down here, just the length of each thread. And these ones are pretty safe to play with. That's pretty much the proximity there. Now I'm going to add a rotate Euler and a combine XYZ. Make sure you have this on local too. And now if we change the Z, you can see they're only moving on that axis. So we'll put in a random value there, just change it to whatever, just to see everything a bit better. I'm just gonna bring it down to the bottom and we'll keyframe it. And then I'll bring it up to like 100, keyframe it once again. And I'll set these both to linear, just so it's smooth. And I'll bring them out a bit. So now we can see what it would look like if it was animated. So it's looking pretty good. I think this is probably good for the threading. You can always play with all these settings. So pretty simple to make it disappear and uh, follow the threading. It's only using a noise texture and a gradient texture. And we'll use a couple color ramps too. And I'm going to add a mix node here and I'm going to change it to color and just select anything. I'll select the noise texture and just go control T. So I'll just hold alt and drag that mapping node over here. And we're going to be using the plane as our object. So over at the texture coordinate, I'll just use this eyedropper onto the plane and we'll need to use the object coordinate. So I'll drag that over to the vector plug it into a color ramp, plug it into the base color. It's not on the right rotation, so I'm going to use this mapping node in between. I'll just change the Y rotation to 90, and it should exactly be on it now. Now if you rotate it, you do everything on it, it should react. We're just going to be using this, and then plugging it into the alpha. So it removes some of it. These are just backwards. Pretty much be like this and then I'm just gonna add a noise textures to make this a little bit rougher. Put the color into the factor here and we'll plug a mix texture in between the vector and plug the color into the next one. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. Turn the displacement on and then you can add a displacement node and take your color ramp and just plug the gradient texture in here again. You can plug this into the height, just turn the mid-level down to zero. So if you just uh, make it a small scale and then pretty much invert the color ramp, you might need to change it a bit. It should uh, have this little raising on the edges. Just gives it a bit more realism and detail. And once you have it organized, you can just take this and copy and paste it. Once you have that copied, you just go onto whatever material you have and just paste it. And plug in the displacement. Plug in the alpha. And now it starts to stitch itself. And for the hairs, um, you would just go into geo nodes and at the end here, before the join geometry, just add a set material. And you can just make a new material here. Threads. I haven't found a way of actually getting it to copy the UV from where they grow out, so kind of have to just make it the same color. They look a bit too thin, so I'm going to make some of these threads a bit thicker. So 
So again, I'll just go over the nodes really quickly. So that's pretty much the whole Geonodes tutorial. If you guys have any questions, just throw them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video.